This webisode is a continuation of webisode number one. Crew of engine six, truck four, prepare dinner. Medical local. Hey, every call is different. You never run the same thing twice. You're constantly, you know, under the gun. You're always being watched by the public to make sure you're doing the right thing. So that's always a constant pressure. But obviously, the, the, in this day and age, with cameras and, and media footage, uh, it, it's right at the fingertips of the internet and all that. It's when you get a fire, it seems to be that there's a media attention right immediately, right, right there. Or sometimes right there along with you as you're going on the attack. So it's. It, it's it's never a dull moment, it, it, and each time I go to a fire, it's always something different. You never do anything the same. This is the typical food fire in the kitchen. They respond to almost every night. While engine six prepares to ventilate the apartment, truck four responds to another call. It's Friday and we know who it's gonna be, Martha. In this large and crowded station, it is difficult to respond to the medical call. Martha isn't in her normal spot. The sergeant talks to the local security officer to see if she's been spotted. Tonight, Martha decides to put on her show on the main stage, the upper level. Unfortunately, it costs the taxpayers each time Martha calls. The Washington DC Fire and EMS is working on developing a system for repeat callers called street calls. 
This will give these patients the attention they need before they need to call for a non-emergency emergency. Engine 6 secures the kitchen and goes back in service. There's a lot more uh, action and calls going on down here at 6 Engine. Um, it's, it's a denser population, or closer to downtown. There's a lot more people working down here. Um, there's just a lot more excitement and a lot more running around. And it's, uh, it's a lot, it, you get to train a lot more, you get to use your skills a lot more down here. It's just, it's a better place for a guy who just came on a job like myself. It's, I love it down here, it's, it's great. I wouldn't uh, want to be anywhere else right now. The sergeant and truck crew help Martha upstairs to sit her down and give her oxygen. She is called so many times that she has been given her own mask. Martha decides that she doesn't need oxygen this time. Truck 4 goes back in service. Another Friday night at the Met. Lieutenant Craig Duck comes in as a spotter for our film crew. This time we ride in the buggy. When I got hired it was 1986 and, uh, in January and after uh, my probationary, after my time at the training academy I was assigned to Engine Company 31 and it was absolutely lousy because it was one of the slowest, uh, no there was good people up there but it was one of the slowest firehouses in the city and being young I wanted to be active and busy so um, that was a challenging year. Hey, one Engine 6 responds to the call. Lieutenant Duck keeps his eye on the scene. After being assigned to the fire investigation unit, uh, I was then uh, moved here to Truck Company 15, number one platoon, um, which has been interesting. This is the first time I've ever served on a truck company, so everybody listening to this that has heard 22 years of me making fun of truck companies and loving engine company work, uh, now I are one, so. Uh. <laughs> Little engine 30, 930, medic 15, we spawn. Engine 
Engine 6 is on the scene at a very familiar location. This is also another repeat caller case that will go to the Street Calls program. The patient is not in need of assistance. The engine company goes back in service. Ran the test to the EKG on him. Uh, vital signs all checked out. And didn't want to go to the hospital at the end. Lieutenant Duck takes our camera crew to another call so that the battalion can be citywide. Well, during my probationary period, there was a number of uh, folks that were influential uh, to me. Um, the, the wagon driver, Ernie Green, uh, he, he was uh, uh, different than I, I was used to. Uh, you know, he, he was born and raised in the district and uh, he kind of took me under his wing, showed me about the district and uh, helped me in getting an assignment afterwards. And uh, so it, he was just good with, with helping me because I was born and raised in Syracuse, New York. and. Uh, so coming down here was a little bit of a culture shock for me and uh, so he helped me with all that and uh, uh, him and another guy that was the, the squad driver, um, uh, they worked with me, helped me through my probation, you know, helped me where to get assigned and, and were able actually to uh, get me assigned to Engine 10 for a number of years after that. So. So while I was at Edge and 10, there was a number of, of uh, things that, that affected me. It was a busy time. Uh, we would uh, do any, anywhere between 20 and 40 runs a day, and we were going to multiple fires a day. The crew of Engine 6 responds to a call involving a driver in distress with his vehicle and its flat tire in the right lane. The police arrive on scene. He is trying to change his flat tire without any tool. He can't find his toolbox, his spare tire. He can't even find his feet. Car fires are, are happen to be one of my specialties, I guess. The, uh, as opposed to getting real uh, big building fires and all that kind of stuff, I usually get the car fires and the trash fires in the alley. So uh, I get ripped on quite a bit for putting out a lot of car fires. So uh, <laughs> we. I usually get at least one every time I'm on the line, so we might get another one tonight. We're trying to get up to it. Alright, how about we go a little bit? 
Lieutenant Duck Where's responds that? to another call. Medical local engine 5, ambulance 1, respond for an seizure. 3800 Reservoir Road, Northwest, Georgetown University, Medical Emergency Center, 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 Medical